Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we are working on the old shoe house. We got a whip and chat for you. This will be the last one you see for this canvas, because this is all I have left. A few boring housekeeping tips before I get into it. If you hear a noise directly to my left, I do have a fan running. If you hear tiny human noises, I hope not, because she is sleeping. And if you hear husband noises, which you will... He's in the room. Say, hi, husband. Hello. There you go. Also, if you guys hear a beep, I do use a timer. All right. Let's see. Let's bust out the pen. All right. Let's put down. I'm very excited. Um, my goal is to finish this either tonight or tomorrow. So, if you guys are wondering what a whip and chat is, uh, this is when I work on my whip, which is work in progress. And you can, you can honestly do whatever it is your heart desires. If you want to work alongside and feel like you're working with a friend, go for it. If you like to keep whipping chats on in the background while you're doing housework, go for it. There is no right way or wrong way to diamond paint. And there's certainly no wrong way to whip and chat. So, um, I'm excited that I'm at the end of this canvas. I'm... I'm going to be sad when it's done because I've really enjoyed working on this. Uh, if you guys want a post review, let me know. I can give you my thoughts. Um, some people I know like post reviews and some people don't really care either way. Um, I've said it before, but I don't want to make content you guys don't enjoy. So if you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see from me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Sorry, I should probably elevate you a little bit so I don't keep hitting it. And as always, my Instagram is linked in the description box as well as my Facebook group. So, so many ways to get a hold of me if you so choose. Um, yeah. So, this has now become the canvas I have worked on the longest. I don't know what is going on here. There's like little things in the glue um that I've worked on the longest and I'm not mad at that at all so but let's let's talk about the last couple days so yesterday um in real time for me not when this was published uh if you guys haven't figured it out I don't upload or record on any kind of schedule I do work when my kiddo is sleeping or when she is sleeping. So I have two windows during the day to get anything accomplished. It's during her nap time and after she goes to bed. I always like to try to record during the day so I can get the best natural lighting possible. But the last three times that I said I'm going to record today, it has been so dark and gloomy at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't really feel like setting up a ring light and... Trying to make it much brighter in here for an afternoon shoot. So, um, sometimes if I have the opportunity to, I'll record like a bunch of videos in a row and then I will just publish them throughout the week. So I do have one already recorded that I just have to publish. I can't remember if I've edited it or not. And when I say edit, just in case anyone's curious, I'm not, I'm not fancy. Um, like at all. I might put an audio bed under, um, a time lapse, or I might have something pop up on the screen, like random information or random questions. If you've seen one of my videos where I'm trying to fill the space with something, you'll notice I, I've put questions on the screen. Uh, and I know that if you're watching this as a whip and chat and it's in the background, you're probably not seeing it anyway, but it, it makes me feel better knowing that there's not like dead <laughs> air, basically. But, um, it's very, very scientific. You know, I say that wholeheartedly just kidding on that one. Anyway, so Yesterday, we had a virtual arts and crafts date with my mother-in-law. She lives in a senior housing community. And with everything going on in the world, it's just not smart for us to see her in person. 
they've had a couple of people test positive and um I don't know if you guys have been around a lot of elderly people, but when they're stubborn, they're stubborn. So they could be like, yeah, I, I'm cured now. And that doesn't mean they're cured. That just means that they're over it or they said they're cured. So uh, we there was one guy that was apparently just wandering around the building and he's like, I feel fine. And everyone's like, go back to your apartment. So until probably... A couple weeks after the holiday season, we're probably going to just keep doing things the way we we're doing. And it sucks, uh, but we're trying to make the best of it. So, a while ago, we put together this care package for my mother-in-law. And inside, it included a couple activities that we thought would be fun for a toddler and for a senior. And in that box included a couple... Lace and Trace dinosaurs, so they're like thick cardboard with holes in it, and then you get shoelaces, and if you guys are hearing the crinkly sounds happening that way, I'm pointing as if you can decipher where things are from, but that's my husband, he's currently making swag bags for his uh, holiday orders that are going out this week. Nope, just crinkling paper. Nope, not accurate. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out my husband... In a totally non-weird way. Check him out. His Instagram information is down below in the description box. He is Data Monster. It's D-A-D-D-A -D -D -A Monster on Instagram. He makes and sells custom Funko Pops. Anyway, so, and it's his mom we're talking about. In, in case the mother-in-law aspect of that conversation was obvious. I shouldn't say that because some people probably miss that. But, anyway, so she has those dinosaurs that are good for... Um, keeping both of their dexterity good and, um, the project we worked on was birdhouses. I just bought a little kit off of Amazon, nothing special. If I remember, I'll link that down below. Um, and if I ever say I'm going to link something down below and it's not in the description box, please let me know. Uh, make sure if you do that you let me know in a kind manner. We are all humans and we all make mistakes. So, uh, I will do my best. Anyway, and I also got her some shrinky dinks and a couple other things. But we just wanted to do one project at a time. So, we pulled up... Uh, we like to use Facebook video chat. Because it seems to be pretty simple for the people involved. And there's no time limit like there is on Zoom. So, we did that. We called her, which was chaos. Quick water break. We had a date set for 10 a.m. Now, neither my mother nor my husband's mother are early morning people. So, we thought, and we asked her first. We didn't say, okay, we're going to do it at this time. We said, does this time work for you? So, she said, yeah, 10 a.m. is fine. So, 10 a.m. comes and goes, and now it's 10.15. I've tried calling her cell phone. Uh, we've tried texting her. We've tried, you know, everything with smoke signal at this point. A little bit more time goes by, and we still can't get a hold of her. So, now we're starting to get worried because, you know, she's a senior citizen. She lives on her own. And... I remembered that one of her friends who lives in the same building as her had, uh, my husband had her number in his phone from when my mother-in-law had a procedure done and that was the contact. So we called her and we're like, have you seen her today? Have you heard from her? Do you know where she is? So she actually went down to my mother-in-law's apartment who, uh, turns out she just slept in. Because she was partying until 3.30 in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing at 3.30 in the morning? What could a woman of your age be doing at 3.30 in the morning? <laughs> I don't ask these questions. I may think them in my mind, but I don't ask them. Because in reality, the answer is probably nothing exciting. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just, you know, she's at home. Anyway, not the point. So... <laughs> So we finally get a hold of her, and then she says, okay, well, how about give me 10 minutes, I'll go walk the dog, and then we can do it. And I said, perfect. 
So 10, 15 minutes have come and gone and I can't get a hold of her again. I'm like, what is happening? Like, what is happening here? If you see me pulling out another color, it's because I already did this color and I apparently missed a whole bunch of spots. So I'm just filling them in as I go. So now it's almost 11.30 and we were supposed to be doing this at 10 a.m. with a three-year-old. So she, of course, has no idea what's going on, thinking something's wrong, she did something wrong, you know, all the fun stuff that's involved with toddlers. So we got the two kits. They came in one box. We put one in a, you know, just like a Walmart box or whatever and dropped it off at her apartment. And it had um, the wood. I guess it was like balsa wood or, um, you know, nothing substantial. There was also no instructions and you just kind of wedged the pieces together and there were like little etched out holes and then tabs and you just put the tab in the hole. That was it. And then, of course, my mother-in-law is like, I don't have any directions here. And I'm like, uh, we don't have any directions either, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And she's like, okay. So we did that. And then it came with two chains of paint. You know the ones that come with like a bunch of them in a row and you just pop all the tops off? So we gave the one to my mother-in-law that had more of your your primary colors and your basic colors. Your red, yellow, blue green maybe it had black i think it had black maybe white and then ours had pink orange purple bright blue tan and brown or gray and brown and our kiddo is so excited and i am that mom that i do not like to do i find zero enjoyment in doing activities that involve me having to clean my child and then my house um some things we do we do outside like kinetic sand is an outdoor activity of course it's heading into winter time here we actually got snowflakes tonight uh so that is gonna have to be something that i figure out a better way to utilize that when it's cold here but i am just not a fan i know some people say you know they have to get messy to to get the brain juices flowing and all these things. Yes, but unless you're coming to clean up my house afterwards, please don't tell me <laughs> what I should do. So, if you're also a mom like me or a guardian or, you know, somebody who just likes to do craft projects with, with children that you don't want mess involved, quick sticks are really good alternative and they are, they look like glue sticks, and they are just paint sticks. And you just twist up the bottom and pull the cap off. And uh, I was really impressed how she did with, like, real paint. And she ended up staying on that call with my mother-in-law for, what do we say, like an hour? Yeah. Which is really, if you guys don't know anything about, like, small children, an hour is an unbelievable amount of time for... A toddler to sit. Toddlers are basically human equivalents of goldfish. Um, they say their age is how long their attention span. Yeah, so she's three, which means she would have a three-second attention three span. Three minutes? Three minutes. Are you sure it's not yeah. three seconds? It's a minute per year. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Either way, all I know is that our kid can invest herself <laughs> in something and get lost in it. Now, there's other things where, you know, something shiny flies by, and she's like, ooh, squirrel. That apple did not fall far from the tree. But, in this instance, she was really, like, unbelievably good. And, mind you, she had been in the high chair playing with a toy before we were set to initially talk to her grandmother because we were trying to get her, make sure she was in a good mood before the call started. Because the last thing you want to do is put an angry child in a high chair and then have them feel like they're trapped and confined. And um, I was just really impressed. She did a really good job. <sighs> that side was to this color, not to my story. I just put this color away. Um, 
she just blew me away. She did a really great job. And her and my mother-in-law both seem to really enjoy themselves. And this is exactly why we put this kit together. So we also had, like I said, there is Shrinky Dink paper, which if you are not a child of the 80s, maybe even the 90s, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. And it's... I have no idea what the material is, but it's smooth on one side, slightly rough on the other. You color things out so you can draw freehand, you can trace things, and then... Oh my god, I missed a whole section of that too. And then I'm going to shift my white pad underneath real quick. Or maybe I'll just move my canvas. That works too. Um, what was I just saying? Shrinky, Shrinky dings. And then you put them in the oven... And the oven works magic, and it shrinks it. So it curls it up like this, and then it slowly straightens it back out. But then it comes back like an eighth of the size. It's something really crazy. But in the 80s, this was like the cool thing to do. Now you can actually buy kits again. So we got some of that, and we sent her some. Um, they're really cool if you want to make keychains. I... I'm really aging myself here, but I had some really super cool shrinky dink earrings of the Jetsons when I was a child. And I'd have like two characters on each ear and each one was made out of a shrinky dink and they'd be staggered. Might have been three characters on each ear. Anyway, that's not the point of any of this. So she loved it. My mother-in-law loved it. It was a really great time, and it was a really good way for my mother-in-law to not feel like she's missing out on anything. And it was a really great way for my daughter to have social engagement with someone that wasn't her mother or her father, even though uh, we're staying home and staying safe. So, I apparently just missed a whole bunch over here, so we're just going to pour this back. So that was really fun. I hope to do it again. Um, if you guys would be interested in doing something like that, please let me know down below. What would you put in your sending box? Um, I really love the idea of doing those birdhouses, even though we're going into winter. Because now they each have a little reminder of each other. And my kid was so excited telling us all about the birdies. And um, she loves... Her window overlooks the backyard, so she's always at the window watching for animals and vehicles and just letting us know what's going on. And so I thought, oh, this would be perfect for her. And I was right. She she loved every single second of it. And my mother-in-law told us tonight that she put the birdhouse up in her, in her room. Um, obviously, there's no birds in her room. I shouldn't say obviously. There's no birds in her room. In her room. As per usual, even though I came into this with a clear-cut idea of what I wanted to talk about, it's still Hot Mess Express. Oh, it's, it's pretty par for the course. So, uh, if you'd like to be part of this Hot Mess Express, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any, any of my crazy antics. So, that was nice. We we really enjoyed doing that, and I could see how enjoyable it was for the girls, or the girls, my daughter and my mother-in-law. They both really seemed to enjoy themselves, and um, we would love to do something like this again. There's no guarantee that doing it again would have the same results. Uh, if you have ever dealt with a toddler, you know exactly what I mean. Um, just like when a kid tells you their favorite food is mac and cheese, and then all of a sudden they won't eat mac and cheese ever again. Toddlers, man, they're weird. Um, I'm debating if I want to refill this pen. But anyway, so that was yesterday. And then we told her, if you take a good nap, we'll go see some lights. So she's fascinated. Like I said, she can see the backyard, and our backyard, uh, backs up against... Um, not the main street, but the main street in our neighborhood. So she has been watching all these people putting up their holiday decorations. There was a house down the street that had a giant, like, 10-foot inflatable pumpkin display for uh, Halloween. And then transitioned that over to a turkey for Thanksgiving. 
And now the turkey is gone, and she's like, Ooh. and we're like, girlfriend, there's, they're much smaller inflatables this time, so maybe she's just not seeing them as well from her bedroom as she was before. We should go down and tell the people to get bigger inflatables. No, no, we shouldn't. Um, so she, I am just emptying out the wax in my pen tip here while I continue to talk to you guys. So she, uh, I guess isn't realizing what it is down there now. And it's two smaller-ish snowmen and a Santa Claus. And I think she's not even seeing the Santa just because he kind of blends in with the, the two. Also, she has no idea who Santa is. Um, we don't celebrate Christmas in this house, but also, like, because we're not telling her every single day that Santa's bringing her something, he's not even somebody who's on her radar, which is fine because she's three and it doesn't need to be part of, part of her radar, whether we celebrated Christmas or not. But, um, so she was so excited and we got to, we told her, <laughs> we're going to go see some lights if you take a nap. And she goes, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. The only problem with that is then she doesn't sleep. <laughs> so, in case you didn't guess it, we did not get to see the lights yesterday. Uh, so, my husband said today, well, if we don't go see these lights soon, you know, we're getting our next HelloFresh box. Um, when I'm recording this, it'll be tomorrow we're getting our box. Our box has come on Wednesday, and if you're hearing, that's tape. He's got packing tape because he is packing boxes. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word there. Um, hopefully, it's not too distracting for you guys, and if it is, well, there's not much I can do about it after the fact. I guess I'll live and learn for next time. He actually asked me before I started recording, are you cool if I work on this while you're recording? I'm like, yeah, go for it. So, there's nobody to blame but myself. Anyway. <laughs> In case anyone is curious, if you want information on, like, packing peanuts or anything like that, definitely talk to him because he bought this bag of packing peanuts. No lie. It was, like, four and a half feet tall. Maybe even five feet tall. And it looks like there's nothing taken out of it. And he's packed what seems like 20 boxes. boxes. Okay. 16 boxes. Um... Anyway, again, that has nothing to do with the what? video at hand. I know. Um, so we ended up going to see the lights today. Now, we did not prep her and tell her, if you take a nap, then we will go see the lights. We did that yesterday. So we can't really, I can't really blame her. And I should have filled this side of the tip as well. <sighs> I've decided I have this cute little heart container, and I'm using that for, like, wax scraps. I don't know. I have a drill container for trash. I know nobody asked, but, um, and I feel like I've shown this, like, a dozen times. Probably more. But this is crystals and trash. And that came from Scars and Gems, which is where I got my bracelets. So hopefully, I should link that down below. I'll link it down below, you guys. I'll link it down below. Where did the wax go that I was just using? It's the story of my life. I'm about ready to just use a different wax right now because I don't know where that went. All right. Here's a different wax. Oh, it's right here. You guys. This is my Not Your Mama's Mud in lemon. This was a sample sent to me by a friend to try it out and I am loving it. Anyway, so we went to go see the lights. There's a place near, I guess it's technically considered Harrisburg, um, and it's called Lingelstown Lights. And basically it is one of those people, like those people who do all the light shows, not a company, not anything like that. And they do it free of charge. They do have a box up for donations for Make-A-Wish. And um, we went and sat there for 
I want to say we sat through like five or six songs, which is really a lot for, again, a toddler who is supposed to have a, uh, whatchamacallit, a three minutes. Attention span. Attention span. See, you guys. You want me to do this? <laughs> no. Sometimes having the husband here is beneficial to my train of thought. I'll tell you it's probably beneficial to more things, but that's okay. So we went, we did that. Now, last year, we went to, uh, we live near Hershey Park. And for those who don't know, Hershey Park is an amusement park based around where Hershey's chocolate is from. And last year we went, and it's called Sweet Lights, and you basically, it's one of those drive through light-up displays. And you can take the kids out of the car seat because they're going like three miles an hour. And we took her out and she, within 13 seconds, was on the floor and was like, no thanks, she, she, she could care less. So we weren't sure if she was going, if she was going to enjoy it or not. Turns out, she does. Um, I think because she's been seeing so much from her window and is a year older, like it's it's been much more beneficial this year. So that was a lot of fun. And then we picked up dinner. We um, So where I live, there's not a whole, whole lot of good food options. And then even less available for pick up and delivery because of the pandemic and if you guys are watching this in the future yay we made it Woo! hopefully um and uh so we picked up outback which i mean outback steakhouse isn't like oh my god this is the most amazing restaurant ever but it's a restaurant that was like a special occasion restaurant for us which we're aware outback is not like a super fancy restaurant but when you live somewhere that doesn't have a lot of nice options. This is nice to do. Um, downside. My kid ordered chicken tenders with fresh fruit. And got mashed potatoes instead. And then her drink didn't come. Um, yeah. And then she was eating. So my husband got his meal and got a salad with it. So he put some of his salad on her plate. And next thing I know. She's eating like apple chunks that are like this big i'm like where did those come from i have no idea i have no idea they weren't in her container when we put the food there and we don't have any apples in our house so i have no idea um but mommy pulled a good move when she got mad and sad about the fruit not being in there we had a fruit cup sitting on our countertop and i said oh here's the fruit baby girl i forgot to bring it out and she was none the wiser and then proceeded to eat the entire fruit cup. So, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> but it was lovely. Uh, my husband and I don't get um, date nights. The extent of our date night now is like, let's give her a mac and cheese cup for dinner. And then after she goes to bed, let's order from a restaurant. Let's get sushi. Yeah. Well, we did that like once and it wasn't great. Yeah. So we also don't live near a body of water. I mean, we live near the Susquehanna <laughs> River, but nobody's fishing for anything good out of the Susquehanna. And if you are, I mean, props to you. Um, but we have a sushi place. It Some of their sushi rolls are really good, and some of them are just not. Um, they also have a tendency to use, like, canned tuna instead of tuna tuna, like albacore, instead of ahi. And I'm like, this is not what I want in my sushi roll. Um, and if you guys don't like sushi, then, you know, probably doesn't matter what is in your sushi roll. Because you don't like it anyway. But that's one thing. Like, I do miss being able to just travel and get good food. Um, which, even if we we're given the okay of, hey, you know, the world's back to normal. Like, we don't have anyone that can keep an eye on her for us to go have a dinner date. Uh, we went, I want to say last year for our wedding anniversary, we went out to eat, and my mother-in-law came over for, like, 45 minutes, and, um, like, we cooked dinner for them and everything and got it all ready, and then basically was like, okay, when she's done with her plate, just take her out of the high chair and 
Don't either don't, yeah, don't don't do anything else. Don't clean up. Don't do anything. Just and that was yes. it. And then we came home, and um, you know, it was nice to have a date outside of the home. But at the same token, it's not that enjoyable when all you're doing is is worrying about your child and the person who's supposed to be watching your child because you're not sure which one of them is going to get into more trouble. Um, I love my mother-in-law to death, but she is that person that you say, please, please don't let her jump on you because she will hurt you. And she'll go, okay. And then you come back and she's on the floor like crying and you're like, what happened? Well, she wanted to jump on me. So I told her she could. And we're like, what are you doing? So I had to tell her, if you are not paying enough attention, she will try to jump on you and not in a, I want to hurt you kind of way. Uh, my husband is like a real life jungle gym to her. But she doesn't understand that not everybody is daddy. Um, she certainly doesn't understand that I'm not daddy in that sense. She hurts me when she tries to jump on me. And again, not that she's aiming to hurt me. She just is all excited and sees this as like a yay opportunity. So I want to say when we get out of... When quarantining hap is all done with and when it's safe for people to be out and about. And I know there's always that one person, whether they leave it in the comments or they say something to me on Instagram or what, that, that tells me, you know, well, you can take her out. Okay, well, she's got underlying health conditions that it's smarter for us to not risk anything, so we just don't. Um, yes, we take her for rides in the car, but... She has not been, neither have I, for that matter, been inside a store, a restaurant, a pharmacy, a museum, any kind of anything that isn't her parents' house or her grandparents' house. And the grandparents' house was a much more recent thing, and it's only been twice per grandparent. Uh, my father-in-law lives on a farm, so that's nice for us to go there because she has, like, all this land to run around on. And he's not socializing with anyone um he's a elderly farmer so anyway um but i i think i speak for both of us when i say that being home has been a huge blessing for us it's it's allowed him to stay home with us it's given her opportunity to spend more time with her father to um, have more fun with her father. Um, I'm less important in this conversation and that's fine. Uh, I was the primary caretaker before my husband got laid off and then it also gave us an opportunity to craft together, which if you can't pick up on it, he uses the same space I use for his business stuff and his pops that I do for my crafting. Um, I'm not phoning him in. He's actually, like, right right over there. Sure. It is true. And I, I think as much as we love being here and being here with her, I th think both of us are ready to have that moment where it's like, okay, let's just break away, whether it's one of us at a time spending, like, even if it's just a few minutes out of the house with nobody else, um, but also... I pine for eating in a restaurant again. Um, and yes, some restaurants near us are doing outdoor seating, even though it's like cold, which isn't enjoyable to sit outside when it's, you know, 27 degrees, even with a heat lamp. But for us, it's more exhausting with everything going on in her life and her world to even comprehend bringing her with us to a restaurant she, you have to remember, she hasn't eaten out in public since January. If we even went out in January, I mean, I'm sure we did. Um, so this is a child who gets very overwhelmed very easily and has not been in social situations and has sensory needs. So we're not rushing to take her to a restaurant, but I think that we're both on the same page of us wanting to enjoy, even if it's just, like, lunch at a restaurant. 
together, just the two of us. Um, the first real date that we went on after having a baby was a drag show that we went to after our daughter had been asleep for, I don't know, a couple hours at that point. And my brother-in-law and his wife came to our house with a pizza. They watched something, like some movie on TV and fell asleep on the couch. And um, our kid had no idea we even left the house because she was asleep. And she's, I don't think she would have a problem with us leaving. I think she'd be more sad daddy's leaving. Like if my husband is not downstairs when I get her from her nap because he's running an errand or he's outside or he's up here. She doesn't know this room exists. Um, like she'll get so mad. Like today she kept saying, daddy's downstairs. And he said, no, daddy's not downstairs. Now I didn't say daddy's upstairs. Cause then I want, I didn't want her to be like, well, let's go see daddy and then have to explain, no, there's another upstairs. Um, but she was so mad. And then the second my husband came downstairs, she like barreled into him as if she hadn't seen him in days. It's sweet. Um, you know, I'm a little, a little salty that I don't get that kind of response from her, but it is what it is. Um, I just spilled drills over by my trash, so don't mind me. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I'm wrong husband you can speak up but i feel like we're both on that same page where we're ready okay so i mean it was hard to date before the pandemic and you know we unfortunately we don't have a lot of opportunities in terms of qualified uh caretakers um we do have a little bit of family locally but they, my brother and sister-in-law, for example, they, ooh, they both have jobs. They have children. And, you know, maybe it's not the most enjoyable thing to just hang out with a three-year-old for an extended period of time. So. And we always worry about our mother-in-law. We, we always worry about leaving her, like, with our kid. Even when we're in the same room as her, I'm like... Hawkeyes on her the whole time. And not that we don't trust her with the baby. We don't trust the baby with her with her gamma. <laughs> I feel like that's a very accurate statement. It's so weird to say that out loud. But our kid's a lot. She's a sweet, sweet, loving girl, but she is a handful, I'll tell you that much. She never stops moving. My mother-in-law's favorite thing to say is, Wow, you guys are really tired. Yeah. Why are you so tired? You should get some sleep. And I'm like, because we have a toddler that doesn't ever stop moving. Notice how I just put this color away and I'm already back. So if anyone wants to know why I have so many colors out on my desk at a time, this is why. Because I think I'm done. I put it away. And then I don't. So... All right, let's grab some more colors here. Colors, colors, light the way. If you guys don't know what I'm singing, which I don't suspect many of you do, I've lost a color. <sighs> Is a uh, Beepo Boogie from, or Bee Bow Wow from Fisher Price. It's a toy our kid likes, and it has. Yeah, it has some, like, sick beats for, like, a kid's thing. It reminds me of, like, a little kid boy band type group. Yeah, but they're all, like, little animated robots. Yeah. So, that's not weird at all, I guess. <laughs> Water break. Alright, what do we want to work on here? So, um... If anybody has seen, it's like on the reels and on Instagram or, oh my god, TikTok. Come on, brain. Work. There's a video. It's this little kid and he says to his mom, Mommy, why don't they just fix that house? And the little kid goes, what house? And the little kid goes, you know, the one with the holes in it. And the mom's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you know, there's some holes in this house. There's some holes in this house. Okay, well, if you haven't seen it, that's the entire video. And if 
you don't get that reference, it's uh, WAP. I'm not going to... Is that Nicki Minaj? No. Cardi B. Right? I don't know. I'm Cardi old. B. Yeah, okay. So... <laughs> we had the moment yesterday with our kid. And she has never heard that song in her life. But she has seen that video on the reels. Clearly more than once because we heard her in her room going... Holes in this house. Holes in this house. Now, if you don't know, our kid is speech delayed. So, to hear her singing that, it, I was just dying laughing. So, last night, she was in a very singing mo like mood, which does not always happen. Sometimes you ask her to sing a song, and one of her favorite things to do is squawk at people. Like, eh. <laughs> I do not. Do you think I squawk like that? <laughs> you just did. Well, I did it to imitate her. Anyway, so we're sitting at the table and she's like, there's some babes in this house. There's some babes in this <laughs> house. Baby. Is that what she was saying? I thought she was saying babes. Yeah, and I was dying laughing. And then my husband said something and she goes, don't get the Rona, daddy. And I, <laughs> I'm like... Now, this is a child who she does not know what that means. And nor would I explain that to her because that is something she would um, obsess. obsess over and, like, ruminate over and uh, worry herself. And she's three. She doesn't need to worry about the scary things that happen in this world. Um, I, I don't want to scare a child who can't comprehend the concepts yet. So, Or, like, scare a child in general. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just jumping out at kids. Boop, you know. Um, totally not, in case you guys couldn't read that scent, that uh, sarcasm. Totally not doing that. Anyway, that's not the point of this. But it's just one of those things that you think kids aren't listening to you. And it's amazing what they pick up. And I was shocked. Because, I mean, we don't... We don't do screen time with her other than the one episode of, like, Mickey or Minnie before bed. And that's only if she's earned it, which is a fun concept. When do kids understand what the, the term earning means? Because she keeps telling me she wants to earn a treat, but thinks that, that by saying she wants to earn it, that means she earned it. Excuse me, which, in case you are unaware, that's not at all how you earn a treat. At least not in this household. So, totally forgot where I was going with all this, but that's alright. It's alright. It's okay. But yeah. Oh, no screen time. So, um, we've gotten to the habit now of when my husband is cooking something on the stove... That I'm like, let's watch some videos on Instagram and I'll watch some reels with her. So that's where she's seeing them. And she likes to watch them with her, her dad, too. But he watches these pizza reviews. Um, dude from Barstool, Barstool Sports? Yeah, David Portnoy. David Portnoy. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. You're not really missing anything. But that's his thing. He likes to watch the pizza reviews. And um, one day he was like, do you want to watch it with me? And they're only a couple minutes long. And she's like, okay. So now when there's a new one, he's like, do you want to watch it? So she'll get, like, little things like that here and there, but it's not. So the thing with those is the guy always says, one bite, everyone knows the rules. And I've asked my husband, what are the rules? And he goes, I don't know. That's, that's all they say. They literally just say everybody knows the rules and they never explain them. So yesterday they're in the room. He's putting her down and <laughs> I hear her saying... Pizza. Pizza review. One bite. Everybody knows the rules. And I was dying laughing. Um, he was able to capture it on film pretty well. And I'm like, this kid can't ask for, you know, basic necessities or... She she yeah, she can't communicate that she needs a diaper change. But she can tell me one bite. Everyone knows the rules. I'm like, okay, well, kid. There's some holes in this house. Yeah, I mean, there are probably... Well, there are some holes in this house because she put two of them in her own room. Which is fun. 
she, uh, we had a lock, the rocking mechanism on her rocking chair. She's a glider in her room that she's had since she was a newborn. And, um, she somehow kept pushing the chair hard enough that it hit the wall. And I kept telling her to stop doing that. And we kept moving the chair and she kept, she's like an ant. She's super, super strong. She's little but mighty. And she pushed it into the wall and made this huge hole, like, over and over and over again. Not just, like, I hit the wall once and there's a hole. Um, so there are some holes in this house. But she thinks it's it's entertaining to stick her finger in the hole. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And she'll tell you, Mommy, I touched the hole. And I'm like, stop touching the hole. So, my husband's going to get a, a kit to patch it, but I think in the meantime, I might just put some regular painter's tape over it. But I also worry if I do that, it's going to draw more attention to it, because that's the kind of child she is. But then one day, she decided to take, like, a chunk of the plaster out of the hole, and then use it as chalk all over her furniture. And when I walked into her room, I was like, oh my god. And then she looks at me and goes, oh my god, mommy. <laughs> With the exact same inflection that I have. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then, you know, she's looking at me and I'm just like, why did you do that? And this is the thing that drives me nuts. And she does this. She goes, why? I don't know, girlfriend. Why? You tell me. And then she'll go, why? <laughs> that started, I don't know when that started. But there seems to be no end in sight on the why. And it's not like an inquisitive why. It's like a, I'm mocking you kind of why. Which, you know, what does she know about mocking me? Probably a lot. She makes fun of me all the time. <laughs> oh, you guys. Rude. Probably don't know what she's saying either. But tomorrow, um, in real time, again, I don't know when you guys are seeing this. If I can get this up and running, I'll try to post it tomorrow. Um... Which, again, you wouldn't know when today or tomorrow is because I'm only talking about, like, general terms here. Um, but anywho, I, I keep, I, I digress. I distract my own self. But she has her first speech session with the IU tomorrow. And for those who've been here for a little bit and heard some of our struggles and some of our concerns, the IU... Uh, is the intermediate unit. It is the preschool program. So all of her services are supposed to be more of a classroom type setting, even though it's virtually from the couch of my house. Um, so they do treat things a little bit differently than they do in the birth to three program. And they have different expectations. Uh, they also keep the sessions much shorter because, again, children of that age have almost no attention span. So we are excited. We need to charge up and test out the iPad that was sent to us to use for our therapy sessions. Um, we got it. And then it dawned on me like, oh, I need to be able to log in on Zoom for these sessions. But I never bothered to ask. And since I haven't pulled it up yet, I don't know if there's already a Zoom app on it or what but they came back from Thanksgiving break I think to today maybe yesterday um, so I don't have a whole lot of you know people I can ask questions to yet because they're all just kind of catching back up so we'll see how it goes I was I was pleasantly surprised that the school district offered to give us an iPad to use for services. And then they're like, please make sure that she's only using it for, um, for her sessions. And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking like, what else do they think she's going to use it for? And then I realized, oh, I guess a lot of parents have tablets for their kids. Uh, she doesn't have a tablet. And I just, I have a really old computer that only works if she's not touching it. If she's touching it, she will break it. And my phone is just not able to handle doing this many video sessions. Um, I say as I'm sitting here recording an hour-long video on my phone. But 
I was very thankful. I brought it up and they said we can absolutely. How I, I was shocked. Um, now, I don't know if like they're going to be like, this is the only thing you guys ever get from us in terms of anything. Or if when the summer hits, if they take it back or if it's, you know, the tablet she uses till she leaves the program. I have no idea. Like, I have, I have no idea. They said, sure, we'll get you one. And then the next day, FedEx is banging on my door like the police officers, which can we just talk about that for a second? Why are you delivering a package to my door and banging on it? To the point that, like, my walls are shaking and it really sounds like the police is there. Vibrating Yeah. Like, ding, 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 ding. Like, okay, I'm coming. Anyway. Again, neither here nor there. Not relevant to the story. Just a total tangent. Um, if you guys are unaware, this is, like, my real life. I'm not any different in my videos or on my lives than I am in real life. Um, yes, I am this much of a hot mess all the time. And even though I'm like a full grown adult, I still feel like I'm winging it daily. Anyone else feel like that? Hopefully you guys do. So I think what I'm going to do next, um, because I finished this, or I haven't finished it, but I'm finishing it in... A more timely manner than I anticipated um, which is great but I don't want to get myself into too big of a project because if you did not know and I will try to link it in the eye um, I am hosting an Alice in Wonderland diamond painting event beginning January 1st um, I will link the introduction video I will be doing an updated video soon um, when I am filming this, we are a month out from the start date, I guess. And the long and short of it is pick any Alice in Wonderland or Alice in Wonderland themed diamond painting and start it on or after January 1st and complete it by February 14th. That's the basics of the event. Use the hashtag Alice in a Winter Wonderland. And if editing Lindsay remembers, I'll pop it up on the screen here. Um, which feels like Lindsay should be, editing Lindsay should be taking notes while I'm diamond painting. But here I am, living on the edge. Living on the edge! Anyway, so I don't want to start a new, a big project because I want it to be completed, whatever I do, by the time I start Alice in Winter Wonderland. Um, I've had a few people contact me and ask me if the image they chose is okay. Honestly, if it's any Alice in Wonderland or Alice in Wonderland themed kit, you're fine. I mean, if you're going to be like, here's a picture of Rambo, does that work? No. Here's a bunch of snowmen, does that work? No, not really. But if you're like, here's a Cheshire Cat, absolutely. Here's the, uh, Mad Hatter's Tea Party, Absolutely. Use your own discretion. It's just for fun. Um, like I said, there will be more details to come. I hope that I can offer more things throughout the event. I'm going to leave that kind of vague because I'm still working on those details right now. But I really hope that you guys want to participate and um, make sure you are using that hashtag. Uh, Instagram is currently disabling... The usage of certain, the certain usages of hashtags. So you can use all the hashtags you want and you can still follow all the hashtags you want. However, we, I can't see the most recent ones. Um, and they're saying because they don't want incorrect political information. And I'm like, what does diamond painting have to do with that? But then, you know, there's some people who use diamond painting platforms for politics and, um, or I guess if you're trying to get certain people's attention with hashtags, you know, that's why. But uh, I digress again. Um, the whole point is that I want to make sure that I'm not missing out on anyone participating because of the disabling of certain hashtags or all hashtags, really. It's just the way they are. And I don't believe that it's like that for international posts. I think it's just for U.S.-based posts. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't. I don't work for Instagram. I'm... 
just an Instagram user. But I am really excited. So I think my next project is going to be my little Craftably kit that I recently unboxed. Um, she is a beautiful little sack size, little palette cleanser, if you will. And I think that I could get that done. I mean, I know I can get that done in a few days because a kit that size usually only takes me a couple days. But I think I have some smaller ones in my stash that I could also start and get done in time for my event. Now, I will say, if I do start a project and I cannot complete it by the time my event begins, um, I am not somebody who works on multiple kits, but I will have to put it aside because I am going to need to make sure that I am... Um, participating in your own Yeah, exactly. And um, I want to make sure that I... Am doing it in a way that is not just me posting my whips and not engaging. So it's going to be taking up a little bit more of my time than, you know, a regular project, which is great because if you don't know, I love Alice in Wonderland and I'm so excited to see all the different kits everybody's using. And if anybody has the question, yeah, it's totally fine if multiple people are, are entering with the same kits. There's no kind of uh, competition for the best kit or the nicest kit or the biggest kit or the fanciest kit. It's it's just something for fun. And I can't wait to see you guys rocking your Alice pieces. So I, uh, I have mine picked out. I have not... Excuse me. Um, I don't think... I know my husband knows what it is. But I don't think any of my close friends even know what I'm doing. Um, it's not something that's super hidden. I'll just say that. But I want to make sure I'm doing something a little unique. And I'm hoping that I can showcase something that maybe not a lot of eyes have been on. And that is all I am going to say about that. Uh, do you guys love Alice in Wonderland? Are you planning on participating in the event? I, I sure hope you do. I really would love for this event to be um, successful, however you want to measure a success in an event like this. Um, you know, my biggest fear when I announced it was that it was going to be me, myself, and I participating. And then I've gotten so many messages from people. I've been tagged in posts. So I think people are starting to get excited for it. Uh, and so take this as a reminder, if you still haven't gotten your kit, there are some options available on sites, uh, that are on hand stock. For example, um, Diamond Art Club is on hand stock unless it's a pre-order. Um, you know, if you're ordering somewhere that takes a long time to process, keep that in mind. Um... Treasure Studios Art has a couple Alice pieces, and their shipping times have uh, improved. I will be having uh, my first TSA unboxing on this channel coming soon. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if I can remember anywhere else that has uh, big hits. I don't know anything about ship times, but Paint with Diamonds I saw has some new Hannah Lynn, which includes... The Cheshire Cat, Cheshire Cat one? I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Um, so there are some options out there. Uh, you can always do a custom. Uh, if you know somewhere off the beaten path that has some great Alice kits, please leave that below for other people to check out. And with that being said, I am going to end this right here. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey with the old shoe house. Um, it has been a wonderful canvas to work on, and I know that most of you have really enjoyed these whip and chats. I will continue to keep them up. Uh, obviously, the next one won't be labeled Whip and Chat the Old Shoe House. But thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure while you are here you give this video two thumbs up, one real life, one virtual. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't miss any of the fun. 
don't miss it, come join the Sparkle Squad and hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I upload a video. I do not upload on a schedule. I probably will never upload on a schedule. I operate on toddler standard time, so I record when I can, and I do the best with what I have. So thank you guys again so much for being here, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Bye.